Good afternoon, everyone. This is Jared Rand. Welcome to the Global Guided Meditation Call for Sunday, October 20, 2024, a little after 3.15 p.m. Eastern. One of the, I believe one of the biggest challenges in this life is letting go. We inadvertently will grip onto things and not let them go. Even at times when we say, oh, yeah, I, you know, I let that go. It's in every moment that we have the golden opportunity. And, and the, one of the biggest things that we're faced with is a low level of trust in ourselves. And that motivates fear, anxiety, stress. And we have this tight grip on life. We immediately make a more intimate space for a closer relationship with the divine healing intelligence that abides behind everything. And because we have a low level of trust, all of our overly fearful, doubtful, and protective feelings instantly appear. When we embrace trust, they instantly fade away when we are trusting that a divine intelligence is always present in our lives. And a softness blossoms inside, and we regain our nature and our natural ability to relax fully into our body and can start enjoying every detail about our present, past, and future. And with deep trust, we will evolve as spiritual beings. And without it, we are lost. We can ascend to the point where we are trusting that every experience that this life brings us is absolutely divine and perfect. Even if an experience may be painful, the greater deeply eternal loving is known and felt hidden inside. A trusting heart can quietly realize how a fear is our greatest teacher always invoking a higher state of spiritual awareness into our future so that we stop pretending to be these small, powerless, ego-driven beings and start living that truly amazing life we so love. I find that choosing trust over fear really comes down to worshiping our spiritual nature over our ego. It is about a deep devotion to our real selves and being truly dedicated to filling up our precious time on this earth with more relaxation, appreciation, and joy instead of ego-driven anxieties, demands, and tension. And with trust as our deepest guide, we can, we can literally pierce through the ego's veil of ignorance and perceive those life-changing people and situations with the utmost patience and appreciation. Having no resistance to fear, we flow with the great spirit of life and know everything works itself out karmically at the very end. This is a deep trust that... that we choose or we don't choose. 
and it instills a fresh enlightening perspective about this life which instantly liberates the mind from all negative thinking with trust and charge when we hit an emotional wall of resistance or fear we open up to it instead of shut down even further we feel into the wall knowing there is always a bigger spiritual lesson behind it to be learned and looking forward to finding out what it is this approach is what allows for a deeper state of peace to make its home inside our heart and soul it is such a powerful force this deep trust that it can turn the most ordinary life instantly into an extremely rich spiritual adventure with this deep trust we feel safe and connected with everyone we meet and naturally are overflowing with an effervescent joy in all directions we tend to respond to others with compassion instead of criticism curiosity instead of impatience and understanding instead of judgment every moment of this life becomes a new doorway that opens up to the highest and deepest aspects of our being when we become more aware of how trust deep trust is a choice we discover our power to either expand or contract our experience of this life in each moment this power enables us to become the spiritual masters of our destiny we no longer fear life how many of us right in this very now moment fear life so we no longer fear life yet embrace it all as we gain more trusting deep trusting momentum we are able to remain only in the trust vibration for longer periods of time we understand how to skyrocket our consciousness in a matter of minutes and eventually catapult our lives into the fifth dimensional realm of the divine trust is the magical gateway deep trust to our true unlimited nature as it transcends the ego and opens the door to our most enlightened state of consciousness if fear if deep fear has been dominating your life retreat you can let it go forgive yourself free the others and release whatever has happened in your past and you can move on it's not worth it to hang on to any low vibration for another day have deep trust that all the trauma you received in this life was given by God to wake you up from this deep sleepy dream we're all asleep and everyone has been caught in some dramatic perpetually self wounding victim spin cycle taught to never trust in life ourselves or anyone else again you just let it go and remember you are still lovable worthy and totally amazing exactly as you are you just signed up for a massive class in spiritual growth and radical enlightened maturity we just said yeah we'll do that that'll be fun no matter and whatever our past life circumstances might have been we're always given the choice how we wish to respond to them now every time we choose deep trust over fear everyone's heart opens a bit wider we feel a more gentle healing heart warming energy coming in and this warm trusting heart is needed in this life 
for the divine intelligent universe is always testing our level of awareness, checking in to see how awake we are. The test is always the same. How will we choose to respond? And more deep trust with more deep trust or fear? Might throw us a bag of super sour lemons just to see if we know how to add some playful creative sweetness and make a pitcher of lemonade. It's good to know that the opposite of this fear is not love, but it is trust, deep trust. Yet through living a life of trust, we naturally start falling in love with everything and everyone. With 100% deep trust, this precious opportunity we have to live feeling completely turned on by this chance to find our spiritual path and connection. The expansive feeling in the heart can become so divinely open that even breath feels as though we are making love with the divine. Are you ready to sign up for choosing a life devoted to always responding with trust yet? The spiritual power we receive from the trust vibration is simply awesome. Total trust effortlessly engulfs all kinds of egoic, egoic negativity that may try to dominate any room. When someone who has 100% unshakable trust enters any community, it's so penetrating and contagious that everyone's ego eventually falls into either embarrassment or humility. When this group of people all simultaneously begin choosing trust, deep trust over fear, you can feel this giddy, enlightening joy exponentially expanding through everyone's lives. The group energy becomes more relaxed and at ease with their life, their future and everything as it is. To live a life flowing with deep eternal trust, it's important to understand that the fear is not a bad thing. It's just not something you want behind making any of your decisions. When you make fear-based decisions in this life, you will only create fear-based outcomes. When you try to avoid fear or attempt to delete it completely from your life, it will sneak back in when your guard is down. Fearful thoughts are there to wake you up, to invite in your biggest self, as they are simply small contracted truths about your biggest self and about reality. It's like tiny grains of sand. You know, you could walk on a beach, and it feels good, warm sand feet. But if one of those little grains of sand gets stuck in your eye, it is amazing how something so small can create such a huge pain. In walking the path of fear, we are living from our ego, what, where does fear come from? The ego. Where does distrust come from? The ego. Okay? Because the ego is always feeling either superior or inferior. We become very controlling and judgmental. Living in ego, we become narrow-minded, completely unaware that we are abiding in a very small, limiting truth. We know we are living from ego because we feel constantly unsatisfied, perpetually searching for the next fantastic thing or new pleasure to escape into. And this ego 
does not know what inner peace is. It is untrusting of new things, sticking only to what is comfortable and often feels caught in needing to protect itself from our emotions and feelings. And the ego is always new ways, finding new ways to hide or shine because it does not trust our inner light. We'll always be there to guide us through the darkness. Doesn't, doesn't believe in any of that stuff. And in order to always choose deep eternal trust over fear, we need to take a more sensitive approach to feeling into ourselves so we can see when we are in a state of trust, deep eternal trust or fear. You can check in any moment of your day what is going on in the area around your heart and chest. If it feels expansive and light, you're in a state of trust. And if it's tight and heavy, you're holding on to fear. The general feeling you carry in your chest is your trust barometer to see what types of choices you're making every day. Because we do every day. We make those choices. Now, how many of us live our lives, mostly? doesn't have to be huge, catastrophic. But how many of us live our lives in fear? Some form, somewhere. We tend to, when we do that, we tend to want to control everything, force our way through this life. We tend to live in this hurried-up mode, rushing through each sacred experience, missing out on the small, precious moments where it could have felt as heavenly angels were present. And when trust does not become a natural response to this life, we become afraid to make decisions. We stop taking risks. We feel stuck in some weird emotional prison and perpetually unhappy for no reason at all. And when fear is more important than trust, we feel like a failure in this life. Instead of simply removing the small speck of sand from our own eye, we spend our time trying to change ourselves, others, and the outer world. Once we discover how to deeply trust in the experience of trust, a bigger truth takes over our lives and the walls of our fearful boxed-in life slowly fall away. When you need to liberate yourself from a fearful state, you must choose to welcome all your fears with 100% trust And remember, everything is perfect exactly as it is. This universe, see, it's interesting about the universe. Because see, we, all of us, and the universe, we we experience, okay? The word mistake was put into our vocabulary a long time ago. But we experience, we don't make mistakes. You know, it's kind of strike mistakes out. That was a big experience instead of a big mistake. Huge difference. Huge difference in vibrational frequency. So all the universe does is experience, just like we do. We experience. We simply have to accept every pile of manure as a message that we need more fertilizer. 
If your life or mind becomes too overwhelming or challenging, simply refocus your awareness back on the biggest feeling of trust that you can remember. We've had, we've all had that, you know. When was the biggest, deepest feeling of trust in this life that we can remember? Dwell only on the trusting feeling for one to two hours. Give yourself permission to stop dwelling on what you fear. In a very short time, you can find the spiritual light starts seeping back into your very soul. Again, many of us rely on the mind for liberation. Don't rely on the mind for liberation. There is an amazing infinite universe all around us. Outer space extends far beyond what we can see with any high-tech cosmic telescope, which can view star systems billions of light years away. This incredible universe is also a living, breathing experience that extends infinitely within us. It continues deeper beyond the atomic quantum particles, which our amazing yet ancient electron microscopes can barely see. And when we look inside ourselves, on a conscious level, using our mind to explore who we truly are, what we discover is yet another realm of infinity. And inside our mind, there are memories piled upon memories, piled upon memories and beliefs within beliefs within beliefs, all stacked to infinity. For every new thought that is forming right now, there are a dozen new thoughts soon to follow. Just sit down on some lazy Sunday afternoon, like today, to spiritually investigate who you really are. And you'll find you can ascend and descend forever within the deepest realms of your very soul. However, what can be found most fascinating inside of this infinite mystery is in the relationship that's manifesting between our inner world and our outer universe. Behave something like a perpetual reflection in a mirror. Whatever is happening within our inner world is attracting, magnetizing, and manifesting that what we are experiencing in our outer world. That's really, really, really important. It's huge uh, a discovery. I mean, to really, really, really deeply, eternally trust that that's what you're doing. It's not fantasy. It's not smoke and mirrors. It's the real deal. This is what we're all doing all the time. It's, it, it, it doesn't... You, we've all experienced it. If I'm in a good mood today, all I see are happy, smiling faces, whatever, wherever I go. And amazing opportunities seem to effortlessly float my way. Then, if I fall down into an emotional dumpster, the face of every person has nothing but gloom and doom smeared all over it. You ever notice that? And it feels like your entire life is about to collapse. The law of attraction is unavoidable. Whatever we are feeling and feeding into emotionally on the inside is somehow always materializing into whatever we see, experience, and physically attract in our outer world. How, ask yourself, how is your relationship with others?
Another example of how the infinite reflection is showing up in our lives is how it manifests in our relationship with others. The more love, compassion, and acceptance we have for ourselves, the easier it is to have compassion, love, and acceptance for others. Or it's always that one thing which we absolutely dislike and cannot stand about the other, which is reflecting some part inside ourselves that we do not care to own or accept. If you're upset at your neighbor, right, instead of having compassion with them, then when you take a closer look inside yourself, you will see how you're not okay with those parts of yourself that feel too dominating, controlling, or aggressive. It's all a deep and yet transparent mirror. Our inner world is absolutely an extension of our outer universe. And the outer world is an extension of our inner universe. This means uh, that this life extends into infinity in every direction and dimension. Our inner and outer universes are never separate, even though your physical body appears to be a completely isolated entity. It is not. We live in one sacred ocean of energy. There simply is just one universe that extends for infinity into the outer realms in all directions and inner dimensions. You contain the wet and salty qualities of the entire ocean and yet are just a single drop in it. The oceanic waves are always moving you and flowing through you as you. Great quote from Ramana Maharishi. He who thinks he is the doer is also the sufferer. The essential problem most people are having with this life is that they are not reaching deep enough inside themselves to reconnect with their actual living, breathing, infinite, spiritual essence. Our spiritual nature is a real thing. It is our most basic reality. It is what keeps your heart beating, your breath breathing, and your life force moving through you in every moment of existence. You do not have to breathe. Your body does it for you. The same is with your spiritual essence. It is living and creating through your physical body, unfolding its essential karmic programming within the great cosmic playground. It's good to know that suffering happens only when the mind gets in the way. When the mind's not there, we don't suffer. How do you do that? You go into the now, where the mind doesn't exist. And then you can watch the mind learn and master the mind. When we become overly focused on thoughts and material, things that make us feel limited or time-bound, we start believing only we only have limited options. The realm of infinite fades into the background of the finite. And we start thinking everyone is living in a very small contracted world. When we only focus on our needs, we forget how to connect with the soul of others. When we are always thinking about money and more material possessions, we cannot see or feel the infinite reality that is beneath it all. A majority of this rat race is trapped in thinking about time-bound appointments which causes consciousness to squeeze itself 
into a tiny temporal box. Right? We set a time, can be any time. Five forty. Whatever. It's a deadline that you set for yourself. And with this deadline coming, we just don't have time to feel that eternity is what feel what eternity is like. When we only live in a limited tick tock twenty four hour clock world that is consumed with resources around money and material items, we instantly start feeling disconnected from the infinite eternal beings we actually are. This addictive dwelling of the mind on what is not infinite or eternal is what makes us feel spiritually disconnected from every living being on this planet, in this now, today. We were all birthed with a limited time-bound physical body. We all know that. So that we could acquire a contrasting perspective and experience ourselves as the infinite eternal being we actually are. We have the capability to create, manifest, and experience anything we desire. We are all the children of a great universal consciousness. We call it God. That is impregnated with unlimited potentiality. If all this talk about the infinite is expanding your mind too much to handle today, just remember that your inner world is always impacting and manifesting something in your outer world. Every thought you believe to be true is what is creating your reality. Your thoughts are always flowing through you and are always creating everything in your life. You will become whatever you think in the future. This is why we are always suggesting be aware of your innermost thoughts and yet somehow remain non-attached. Your thoughts are not who you truly are. You are an, an, an eternal, infinite consciousness who is beyond form and time you are, you are pure awareness reflecting back on itself in this physical universe of space and time. Let go of thoughts that were cycling in your mind yesterday and ideas about the way life should turn out for you tomorrow. Be here now. Now is the moment of power. Now is where enlightenment is discovered. For physically, you are forever forced to exist in this present moment. Your present awareness is always being generated from this present moment. Know this and live and breathe within this knowing. Join me in the meditation. I'll return to close this out.
Take an easy and slow breath in through the nose. And an easy and slow breath out from the mouth. Remain still. Indulge yourself deeply in this delicious, delectable moment of now. Savor the divine ingredients that your past memories and future thoughts are offering you today. Totally consume this moment of now so that you may be consumed by the now. Sit and devour this ordinary experience of life because it is an absolutely scrumptious experience. Notice how each bite is fresh, brand new, unlike any other. Savor the others in your life, yet be sure to enjoy the richest and creamiest snack of them all. You you're definitely the most delicious one. Enjoy. Take this with you for the rest of the day into the evening and night, following morning. We will return here Monday, October 21, 2024. Little after 3.15 p.m. Eastern to continue our global guided meditation call. Be gentle, kind, generous, and humble with yourself at all times. Be in the highest of the highest high, deepest of the deepest, deepest, purest of the purest, purest. Eternal gratitude at all times. No matter what's going on within you or outside of you. Open your heart and let the magic flow in.